Hi, Captain Steve for BoatTest.com, and today I'm going to be doing a test with Shero propellers. Now, we've gotten a lot of feedback from our viewers on our Shero test. It's made specifically for that boat. It's made specifically for that engine. How is that something that's going to help us? It's a boat that not everybody's going to be getting. Okay, we hear you and we listen. So today, we're going to be doing a test of the new series of Shero propellers, the MX-3. Now, this is made for the Yamaha V6 series of engines. They've got 22 different pitches, left and right hand, so 44 different propellers available. We're going to be testing right at the mid-range, 19-inch pitch. So it's the most popular pitch size on the most popular engine, on the most popular size boat, and it's not going to get more apples to apples than this. So base test, Saltwater Series 2 props on 300 horsepower V6 engines. And let's be clear about one thing. This is not a new boat just off the shelf. This has got hundreds of hours on it, and so do the engines. Let's get on the water and see how it does. The R302 is a center console with a 9,000 pound empty weight. For our test with each set of props, we had a full load of fuel, 300 gallons, which weigh 1,800 pounds, and the same two people aboard. Our test boat's estimated weight was 11,220 pounds. Now this is an important number because boats this size are weight sensitive. While most boats are not run with a full tank, they do usually have more than two people aboard, so this definitely is a real world test. Test power was a pair of Yamaha 300 horse outboards. We tested with standard stainless steel 15 and a quarter by 19 three bladed propellers which come with the engine. After the first runs with this prop, it was removed. We inspected it for nicks, dents, any damage. It was found to be free from any defects. So a couple of observations and these are what would be considered normal. We put it in gear. You can feel that there's a rumble underneath the boat, especially when you're coming away from the dock. You'll just feel it. Put it in reverse, and the rumble is really pronounced. I mean, all that cavitation, all the bubbles, everything going under the boat. It's just a rumble that you can feel through the whole boat. We were having minimal control in reverse. We could steer it, but then when we come around, turn the wheel hard the other way, there was a long pause. And then it would start coming back. Go at cruise speed, put it into a turn, she drops off a lot of speed in that turn. Going straight ahead in cruise, I've got to use maybe three quarters of a turn of this steering wheel to keep it straight, just to keep my heading. So imagine doing that for three hours. Again, these are all things that are considered normal. I mean, that's just how it is when you drive. Now, let's switch over to the Shero props and see how different things are. We brought out the Shero MX3 15.04 by 19 prop. We inspected it for the same types of defects and found none. This is an off-the-shelf prop and not dialed into this specific boat, but made for this typical engine application. Then, off we went on the second set of runs. Okay, first of all, with the Shero prop, immediately noticeable when you put it in gear. You don't feel that low speed rumble at all. It's just a nice smooth transition from sitting still to moving ahead. Now when you add speed, definitely much smoother ride. All of that rumble that you would normally feel when you're at speed, gone. In reverse, it was really surprising to me. Here, it was instantly controllable any way we went. We even did a full turn to get momentum to try to make it the worst it could be and then stop that turn and it immediately came back in the opposite direction. It was just night and day between the two propellers going in reverse. Tracking was the most shocking where you saw I had to use maybe three quarter turns on the wheel just to stay straight here I was taking my hands off the wheel. In these kind of conditions, I mean, there's not much shop here, but there's still a little wind, still a little bit of wave, so in a quartering sea, it should have been pushing us off course over and over again, and it just wasn't doing that, tracking straight and true. The high speed turns, where we lost a lot of speed before, we still lost a little bit of speed, but not nearly as much, but more importantly, no ventilation, so I had complete controllability, and I was able to do a lot more maneuvering at high speed with these propellers. Now. Let's get into the numbers. Firstly, top speed. 51.5 with the standard prop and 51.3 miles per hour with the Shero prop. Now, this is not surprising and it's actually consistent with our previous tests of Shero props. 
Sure is hard for racing and getting a high top end speed. No one runs wide open for more than a couple of minutes, engine makers don't recommend it, and of course, it wastes a ton of fuel. Sure, props are made for better fuel economy, longer range, better mid-range RPM performance, and better handling. So let's take a look at a comparative speed chart. Starting at the left side of the chart, we see in the low RPM range, from 600 to 2000, that the performance of the two props is about the same. At the very right of the graph, at wide open throttle and turning 5750, they're also about the same. But between those two endpoints, we discover quite a different story. At 2500 RPM, we see that the boat with the Shero props springs to life, and the boat goes 3.3 miles per hour or 31% faster than with the conventional props. Then, somewhere between 2500 and 3000 RPM, the boat with the Shero props gets over the bow wave and shoots ahead on plane. For boats of this type, Planing speed is typically between 18 and 20 miles per hour. During our test of the Roballo R302, that looked to be at about 2650 RPM. At the same RPM settings, when the boat was equipped with the props that come with the engine, we see the boat is only going about 10 miles per hour and it's just mushing along. At 3000 RPM, the Roballo with the Sharo prop is running at 25.7 miles per hour, solidly on plane, while with the standard prop, the boat was still wallowing along at 13.8, nowhere near being on plane. With the Sharo props at 3000 RPM, the boat goes 11.9 miles per hour or 86% faster. At 3500 RPM, I recorded a speed of 32.2 miles per hour with the Sharo props, considerably faster again. 11.9 miles per hour faster than with the conventional prop which had just now managed to get the boat on plane. At 4000 RPM the gap between the speeds of the boat with Shero props and with the stock props narrows. Nevertheless the R302 with the Shero props went 4.1 miles per hour or 12 percent faster. The narrow band between 3000 and 4000 RPM is where most boaters will run their boats most of the time. For those operators that want maximum range, it will be in this RPM band on most boats. And when the going gets rough, 25 miles per hour is usually the most comfortable speed in all but the snottiest conditions. When it comes to fuel efficiency, even at 13.9 miles per hour, there's a 20% increase in fuel efficiency with the Shero props. At 25.7 miles per hour, where the Shero prop is at its peak, there's a 29% improvement. And that's where the Sharrows also start paying for themselves in the long run. At 25.7 miles per hour, the boat got 1.76 miles per gallon for a range of 477 statute miles with a 10% reserve. That's a remarkable range for any center console, no matter what the brand. At the same speed with the conventional prop, the boat only got 1.4 miles per gallon for a range of 378 statute miles. 97 miles, or 20%, less range. The most efficient speed for the conventional prop was 33 miles per hour, where the boat got 1.48 miles per gallon for a range of 399.6 statute miles. As can be seen in this chart, the Shero props are more fuel efficient at virtually every speed. So how were these props able to produce such remarkable fuel efficiency? The answer is, by having such an efficient advance rate. If a prop were spinning in a solid medium, then a 19-inch prop would move ahead 19 inches with every rotation. But props don't spin in a solid, they spin in a liquid at very high speed. The result is that they don't move forward at the theoretical pitch advance, but at a considerably less distance. That difference is commonly called slip. So there's a lack of efficiency inherent in the design of all props. Shero propellers capitalize on that shortcoming and are actually more efficient than any standard prop with each rotation. How much more? A lot more, actually. Look at this chart showing the actual propeller advance rate. Starting at the left at 600 RPM, you can see the actual advance for the conventional prop tested in red and the Shero props tested in blue. Note that the Shero props have a greater advance rate at all speeds except at wide open throttle. For example, at 3500 RPM, the Shero prop advances through the water 17 inches for every 360 degree rotation. In other words, the boat propelled by the Shero prop advances 6.3 inches or 59% more with every rotation at 3500 RPM. That, in a nutshell, is how the Shero propeller saves so much money. It simply goes further ahead with every rotation. I've done so many comparisons and before and afters with Shero propellers that 
nothing surprises me anymore. I knew we were going to get better efficiency, better handling characteristics, better maneuverability, better everything all across the board. And here we are getting it all over again. And that's my full review of the MX-3 from Cheryl Propellers. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.